Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us today to stay curious. Today with Mr. Hugh Harris, the voice of NASA. Hello, Mr. Harris. Good to be here. Well, good. We're so happy that you're here today. Marty Winkle's on our Streamlabs there. Marty, I don't see the our image on our monitor here in front of me under the camera. But happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there today. Uh, Thanksgiving week, uh, and we're going to talk about, with Mr. Harris here, Thanksgiving spent in space. And right behind me here, whoop, don't want to show that yet, right behind me here is a very rare picture on our screen of the International Space Station being trailed by a space shuttle on Thanksgiving Day. And Mr. Harris, you're going to tell us what day that is coming up here. So you all stay curious, okay? We got uh, turkeys in space, astronauts in space, and and uh, we're going to turn Hugh Harris loose here in a minute. But we would be very remiss if we didn't remember this anniversary 59 years ago today. And, uh, you know, when President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, uh, this is, uh, I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 59 years later, hmm, I don't even know if it's going to be a blip on the news today. Uh, but Mr. Harris, what do you remember about that? Where were you? Well, well I, I actually was driving to my job at the NASA Center in Cleveland, mm -hmm. which was called the Lewis Research Center. Now it's called the Glenn Research Center. And um, the... It was really, of course, shocked like everybody else in the country and uh, and also wondered what the effect would be on the space program. Marty, what are you saying? Yes. It was assassinated on the 22nd, which was yesterday. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm a day off then. Uh, uh, but uh, we'll never forget it, regardless, okay, uh, a, a moment of, of where time froze. And it's on good there. we have Marty. Uh, uh, right, that's where all the newspapers I brought up, the 23rd were on there. Well, 59 years, you can be a day off or so forth. But I've actually, uh, because uh, the, the space program is so tied into President Kennedy, uh, here is the where he was actually assassinated, uh, at Daly Plaza. I've been there several times. I'm actually standing on the X they have there, and that's the school depository building mm -hmm. where uh, Sniper um, Oswald was. And there is, I'm standing there in the middle of an X that they have on the street there. It's kind of interesting that they have two X's where the shots were fired. This is where the Zabruder, the man Zabruder was standing. But of course, we have our iconic Space View Park, Hugh Harris, where this beautiful statue of President Kennedy is uh, uh, with the A for Apollo there. Uh, and around it are space workers on pylons. And you're out there. Marty's out there on the pylons out there. Uh, beautiful tribute to the president, isn't it? It is. And, uh, you know, it requires somebody with foresight uh, to actually make a program like the uh, the space program uh, come to life. And uh, uh, I, I can't emphasize how important the, uh, the leadership is uh, to, uh, in order to affect that. And it, it's something that I think has been just a, trem a tremendous benefit uh, to the entire country not only uh, in all of the uh, technology that's been developed, but in the position of us in the world. Absolutely. Marty rightly pointed out in our pre-production meeting before the show here that had it not been for the support of President uh, Johnson, Lyndon Johnson, of course, the vice president under Kennedy, vice president's traditionally over NASA, mm -hmm. correct you? That's right. And here we see, who do we see uh, the president with there? President Johnson. You see the, well, we got, we got uh, Jim oh, Webb. Jim Webb, yes. Jim Webb's on the left there. Uh, you got Jim McDivitt uh, on one side of Johnson and Ed White on the other. This is after uh, the Gemini Titan 4 mission. 
1963. Uh, uh, so, uh, no, been six, I'm sorry, 65. Yeah, 65 is when this mission would have been, mm -hmm. 65, 66. So, uh, uh, yes, we have a Kennedy Space Center and Johnson Space Center. <laughs> appropriately forever that's right in, in our uh, our space world here so any other comment you'd like to make about president kennedy and this uh national tragedy 59 years ago well one has to wonder uh if he had not been assassinated uh <clears throat> whether the program would have gone ahead far uh, faster uh than it did on the other hand um uh, uh, Johnson uh, did a tremendous job and I think uh, certainly deserves the uh, uh, be having one of the centers named after him. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, all right. We're, as it was interesting, though, that President Con Johnson did not run for re-election and President Richard Nixon become president in 1968. And Johnson was just a bystander July 69 when we landed on the moon. Uh, I found that kind of interesting history. Well, <laughs> and uh, but I think Nixon actually uh, appreciated what was going on and certainly uh, had a hand in helping uh, further the program. Well, enough of political history and American history. We want to get into uh, <clears throat> Turkey history. And wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving here with our mem that we put up on the uh, our Facebook page there. Uh, that's a well-traveled uh, astronaut there uh, photograph there, or Turkey astronaut there. Well, as I as I uh, look at it, I believe that this will be the twenty-seventh time that Thanksgiving has been uh, uh, celebrated in the space by space people from earth that is so interesting 27th time in the history of the earth there's your thanksgiving dinner on earth hugh and on the international space station uh you need scissors <laughs> and uh, uh warm water and so forth to have your meal up there so tell us a little bit about what you've uh put together for us today in thanksgiving hugh well it, it's not a, a great deal but the um uh the the very first thanksgiving in space uh had to be, was on the uh, skylab mission there's a picture and, of that and uh unfortunately or fortunately uh the uh, that was um uh, uh bill pogue and um uh, ed uh, gibson and um uh jerry carr and uh two of them uh, were in the part of the uh, of the uh, uh, space station or the uh, Skylab uh, where it was open to the uh, atmosphere uh, or the lack of atmosphere and uh, Carr I had to remain in the, uh, uh, the the little area which was sort of the tunnel uh, going in and so he couldn't have anything while they were outside and of course they couldn't have anything while they were outside either uh, because, during a spacewalk because they wouldn't be able to eat it through their their helmets uh, but when they got back in uh, there wasn't actually a thanksgiving dinner to partake of uh, but they were very hungry so they ate two of the uh, each ate two of the dinners that had been prepared uh, for them, uh, which in those days uh, frequently uh, were dried uh, food that was then rehydrated mm -hmm. uh, by them. So the, the, the first Thanksgiving didn't have a turkey. Okay. Bacon cubes, though, probably. Uh, right in possibly. Yeah. But just like us on Earth, they stuff themselves with two meals, right? You? That's right. <laughs> and, uh, so I guess that part was uh, very appropriate. Um, the uh, w one thing that uh, did come from the space program, though, and it came from the uh, 
uh, really from Gemini uh, Skylab and the uh, the early programs was a uh, uh, the methods that are used to uh, preserve food and to uh, also uh, a method for tracking uh, it so that you know that it's fresh or good to eat when you get it. Mm. And um, that has a, a, a long name, um, the uh, of Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Program. Now, that was uh, adopted by many of the uh, uh, food companies here on Earth, uh, including the ones that uh, produce the butterball uh, turkeys that many people will be eating today or tomorrow uh, on Thanksgiving. And um, it's a, a method of making sure that what people are getting is really the uh, the best quality. It's used uh, not only for turkeys, but uh, almost all of the uh, the food uh, that has a uh, uh, has to have a uh, long shelf life, and uh, and also uh, usually a, a fairly long process of getting it from the producer uh, to the consumer. Space has always pioneered some of these things, you know. It made people look at things in a different way, like oh, like food, abs right? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, well, Hugh, you got some other uh, reminiscences there. We we've got a typical uh, holiday meal uh, astronaut style there. Uh, we've got a few pictures here of some of astronauts enjoying uh, Thanksgiving in space uh, on a. Uh, uh, sh uh, International Space Station there. So go ahead, sir. Tell us what you have there. Well, there <laughs> actually the uh, once they started having uh, 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 Thanksgiving in space, uh, which really uh, was uh, years later than the uh, than the Skylab, um, they they had a, f a fairly standard meal that involved. Uh, turkey and um, uh, potatoes and uh, sometimes peas and the um, uh, the um, and I lost track there of the uh, some, of the, food uh, they were uh, some of the food that they're having but uh, one of the things that they added um, in uh, years after they uh, started having it uh, uh, Thanksgiving was uh, things like shrimp and cranberry sauce, and you probably know this, but uh, cranberry sauce is sort of a messy thing, uh, and that's one of the problems in space is that you don't want to have messy things because they float around if you if they get loose and can damage your controls. They uh, but in the case of uh, a can of uh, or a package of cranberry uh, sauce, the if you take it out, it retains exactly the same shape that it was when it was in the can <laughs> yes. or or in the pouch, and uh, so it's just sort of globbed all together. But it uh, looks like uh, it's in a transparent can if. Uh, uh, in in some cases. Uh, well, we're enjoying a conversation holiday style for Thanksgiving with Mr. Hugh Harris, Public Affairs Office uh, Chief, uh, the end of his 35 years of illustrious career there at NASA as uh, involved the public relations of uh, uh, the rocket launches there. Uh, Marty Winkle, our, our my co-producer over there, you said you have a question or comment? Yeah, we have a question from uh, Larry Puskar. Uh, you, do you think, had it not been in Vietnam, the space program would have progressed faster and further? He's talking about uh, Apollo going to the moon. It's, it's very hard to tell uh, with something like that because technology development is really one of the keys. And whether 
that uh, would have all been put together uh, faster uh, is is probably not uh, uh, accurate. It's um, technology usually takes <laughs> as long as it's going to take, and uh, there wasn't really a slowdown. I think uh, during uh, Vietnam. Uh, that cost us uh, a lot of time as far as uh, where we got to. But on the other hand, you know, that it's possible that uh, in some cases, uh, some industries uh, had uh, other priorities that they had to uh, uh, fulfill before they uh, got to the space thing. But I don't know that, and I, and I sort of doubt it. Good question, Larry. Of course, landing on the moon, July 1969, Apollo 11. And then we doubled down on that in the month of November, uh, 1969 with Apollo 12. And um, also going on at the same time, uh, Larry Pusker and those of you out there, the Vietnam War going on and the civil rights uh, unrest in our country. Three things going on at the same time. Either one of them would have been plenty to handle for any administration. Marty, another question? Yeah, Mark Uziak is asking you, where did you watch the SLS launch from? Uh, unfortunately, I, I went back to bed <laughs> uh, when it was postponed. The, I had a uh, doctor's appointment the next morning at 7.15, and uh, when the delay came, I thought, that's probably not going to go today uh, because, of course, it had been postponed. <laughs> and uh, so I, I better watch it on television, the, the replays, if it does. And that, of course, is uh, it went ahead. And I, I was sorry uh, <clears throat> that I missed it because the, uh, it's the largest uh, rocket that's ever been launched. On the other hand, uh, the, I was involved in the development of uh, a, uh, a very, very large solid motor, which was never built, I, which was never used uh, in space. And um, the, uh, we fired it down near uh, Homestead uh, in uh, South Florida and wiped out a lemon grove uh, down there with the uh, uh, the acid deposition that came from it, which uh, I don't think anybody had anticipated at the time. And, but we learned a lot about uh, not only the, uh, the solid motor, but about uh, what we had to do as far as uh, the, uh, the vegetation around where we were going to fire one. Mm hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, a lot of people probably went to bed thinking that was going to scrub after that delay, a little after one o'clock. Uh, uh, what was it? Twelve o four, Marty, and then they had to delay. I'm I'm getting I think it was like uh, roughly two a.m. Yeah, well, yeah. They, I was... they didn't go until yeah after yeah, two. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's on its way, and and everything was nominal, and that's what we want to hear in the space talk business there. So. Good question. Thank you, Mark, for watching today. Uh, it is our little Thanksgiving program here with Mr. Hugh Harris. I, I'd be remiss to say if the American Space Museum and myself personally was not thankful for great people like this uh, that we call National Treasures wanting to participate in not just in our Stay Curious program, but in all of our endeavors here at the American Space Museum, Hugh. Uh, we want you to know that, that we are blessed and feel very thankful for people like you being involved with us. Well, one of the astronauts who's involved, uh, uh, Nicole Stott, uh, actually was on uh, on board the uh, uh, International Space Station when the largest uh, Thanksgiving uh, feast, if you want to call it that, uh, was held uh, in space in which 12 astronauts uh, were involved. And that's the uh, the largest one so far. Well, uh, here is Nicole Stott, and uh, she was coming back from the International Space Station after uh, 
five months. Uh, that is the STS-129 crew in their little bag of goodies on there. Um, uh, and uh, yes, of course, she's an awesome friend of our museum. And it is so, uh, uh, this is the picture that we have behind us here. Let me show this version of it there. And that is STS-129, the lighter streak trailing the space station after they undocked the evening of Thanksgiving Day 2009, August 26, 2009. Uh, and then they landed 2007, about 9 a.m. at Kennedy Space Center. And that is uh, 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 STS-129 trailing the space station. And that is actually my daughter, Jessica, in the green uh, hoodie there with looking watching it with binoculars. I knew where it was going to be. That was all predictable uh, One of the rare times that you could photograph the ISS being chased or or a departure of the, the space shuttle there and that is 129 taken 13 years ago and I'm Again, I'm thankful and grateful and blessed that I do know Nicole Stott and my daughter and her are both in that same picture so to speak you well <clears throat> and I wonder whether your daughter at the time had any idea that she would meet Nicole uh, and uh, and actually be involved. Uh, right. No, they've not met yet. Oh, yeah, they yeah, they've not oh. met yet. She's up in Tennessee. <clears throat> this was taken in my driveway in Boone's Creek, Tennessee. Wow. Uh, on Thanksgiving Day, two thousand nine. So. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of interesting. I remember those encounters. Mm -hmm. It was so cool to to watch. Uh, we did a lot of outreach, and we would have scout troops, and say, "Okay, here comes the space station, and now comes the space shuttle right after it." And ah, man, those days were just just magical. It seems sometimes. Well, and I think that <clears throat> uh, things like that are so important. Uh, to inspiring interest uh, in the program. Uh, you know, the, the NASA program is probably more dependent on people, uh, just ordinary people in the country, uh, recognizing the value and uh, being behind it than any other government program. Oh, uh, without a doubt. I mean, the Forestry Service, I mean, they're great, but you know they don't have the uh, mm. the the forestry geeks that <laughs> the space geeks are out well, they there. They have some. No, no, they have some. <laughs> There's a there, we're not knocking Smokey the Bear at all there. Okay. Or tree uh, huggers. Or either. tree huggers either. <laughs> but uh, it's sort of like I say with amateur astronomy, Hugh. You know, uh, been an amateur astronomer all my life, and we love throwing out telescopes and a sidewalk and getting people to look at the rings of Saturn and Jupiter's moons. I've yet to see an amateur biologist dissect a frog out on the street, okay, for entertainment purposes. No, they usually do it in <laughs> classrooms. Right, right, right. But our classroom is astronomers, and space is outdoors there. So, uh, uh, well, I, I think, uh, you know, absolutely that uh, interesting people in uh, uh, science uh, when they're young. Uh, is so important to the uh, the future of our country, and it's not only uh, one of prestige; it's really one of making life better for people here on Earth, and uh, that's what it's all about. And I don't think people realize how much better our lives are on Earth because of the thirty-year legacy of the shuttle era. No, well, that's true. And um, anytime anybody needs anything in the medical field, uh, there are thousands of innovations that have been made there alone. Oh. As a matter of fact, you know, just the cleanliness of um, operating rooms, uh, which uh, in the past uh, could lead to infections and that sort of thing, a lot of that uh, advances came from clean room technology that was used to protect uh, electronic circuits and uh, and various other things uh, uh, during the development of, of uh, the uh, spacecraft and uh, rockets, et cetera.
Absolutely. Well, we've got some great friends watching us there. Why don't you get a, give a shout out to a few of them there for me, please? Well, we have uh, Doug Forrest, uh, William Whiting, Gary Car Jerry. Uh, Gar Gary, Gary Gerald. Ger Gerald. <laughs> and, uh, Dave Stangy. Dave Stangy. Tom Usiak. Hey, Tom. Good, good he had a birthday you. the other day. He did. Yep, yep. He's cra He's well uh, into his uh, uh, seventh decade roaming around Earth here. Well, Just he, a youngster. He's still a youngster. Yes, yes. he is. And, they, uh, and I appreciate the fact that he's probably in the same sign I am. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and they, uh, uh, Larry uh, Pusker, of course, who we heard from, uh, Steve Hammer, uh, Mark Uziak, uh, another great photographer, uh, Chris Kelly. Hey, Chris. Uh, Bruno, uh, and I'm not sure. I'm Bruno, Bruno Lacordo, and uh, Mariana Christ, and uh, Franziski Scorn Scornia. From Mexico City, all right, and uh, just gotta get a little shout out to our, our one of our favorite artists, Mr. Chris Callie, out there, whose dad was Paul Callie, yeah, absolutely, uh, in there, and uh, just a little uh, message for you, Chris, go Buckeyes, <laughs> as well, we have the game with the Michigan Wolverines. Well, coming one up one here. thing uh, we we really ought to include. Uh, was a uh, a benefit that came from Mexico uh, in our discussion. Oh yes, uh, you were for... talking about the Mexican <laughs> astronaut uh, Villanueva. Yeah, what was his contribution there? Well, he was the uh, the first person uh, that introduced tortillas on board the space shuttle uh, in the uh, uh, in the dinners, and uh, one of the they discovered very quickly that one of the great uh, advantages to using tortillas, uh, which are still used today and have been included in some of the Thanksgiving uh, uh, dinners, is the fact that they don't make crumbs. And crumbs, <laughs> which comes from ordinary bed, uh, bread or rolls, uh, is... Uh, you know, a very, very bad thing to have floating around. Mm -hmm. So having a food uh, that is uh, sort of can take that uh, niche that uh, bread would uh, occupy mm -hmm. uh, was a, a great innovation uh, that came from, I think, our only Mexican astronaut. Correct, he is. Uh, 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 what's his first name, Nella Vila? Uh, uh, yeah, there's only been one astronaut from Mexico. Uh, Hugh, tell us why crumbs aren't acceptable floating around in a environment there. People well, not, might can, not dawn on them why that's bad. Well, it it can uh, get up into the uh, electronics uh, and uh, and and cause uh, you know a, a problem with the uh, flow of electricity. Uh, or it can uh, actually get onto instruments and you take a look and you don't really see what you're supposed to be seeing there. Uh, the uh, uh, liquids are, are also a problem uh, and that's why you had such things as accordion water bottles. And uh, you know on the, uh, on the Flights and it possibly they're they're still used today. Uh, you want to have a bottle uh, that doesn't have any air in it, uh, and the way that you do that is by having sort of uh, an accordion type of uh, plastic container that uh, so when you fill it up, um, it expands, and as you take it uh, the water out and drink it. Uh, that it uh, contracts, but um, it doesn't, um, uh, it allows you to control the water better than it would in an ordinary type of bottle mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you have sitting over there. Okay. Rudolfo, Rudolfo Nero. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Yes. Rudolfo Nero was the Nero. Cuban astronaut, I believe. Who, who, what's, who's commenting there, Marty, on that? Uh, Francis 
the guy from Mexico City. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Rodolfo, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yes, there. Uh, uh, good, good. We appreciate that, yeah. Um, what else you got there? You got some more holidays away from Earth there you wanted to share with us, or? Well, I, you know, we have some uh, pretty interesting flights that have gone on uh, with the uh, uh, shuttle during the uh, the month of November, and you might want to talk about some of them, uh, including one that had a Ukrainian uh, experiment on board, mm. and uh, which uh, I I think is interesting from the standpoint that we don't usually uh, think of uh, Ukrainian uh, scientists and engineers being involved, but they actually have been uh, uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. What one was that, you remember? Uh, I didn't bring my shuttles in the month of November up to my table here today. And... So, of course, uh, one of the biggest uh, holiday uh, missions was the Apollo 8 uh, orbiting the moon on Christmas Eve, 1968. Uh, there have been up to up to 2009 in the STS-129 mission was the eighth shuttle in history to mark the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday in space. The second time for Atlantis. The first time it was just in Atlantis on STS-61B in 1985. Uh, so, um, uh, and like we said, uh, this is Thanksgiving Day, 2009. You got the International Space Station Expedition, uh, I want to say 29 uh, crew up there. And the lighter streak is a time exposure of Atlantis departing the shuttle with our friend Nicole Stott on there, coming back from her expedition. I, I think it's neat that <laughs> you were able to get that shot. Uh, that was, uh, you know, not one that uh, NASA released. Right. It no, was... I, it's uh, uh, what we do as amateur astronomers, look for, right. for things to photograph in the skies. And but that was, like I said, that I just wish that would come back. The, the, uh, the shuttle was big enough. You can't see the dragon approaching it uh, on a streak. And this is a time exposure of about 15 seconds there. Uh, and uh, the speed of the uh, space station, uh, and then, of course, uh, STS-129 uh, in pursuit of it there. So, uh, well, Hugh, this is, uh, what else, do you have anything else you wanted to share with us there we were well, looking at? We, we could go through uh, a lot of the uh, <clears throat> uh, actual missions, but uh, uh, the, I'd have to look yeah, at Yeah, today the... we're just going to focus on the Thanksgiving <clears throat> Uh, time. How about uh, at the centers you worked at? Uh, uh, you know, certain you had to have a if there's people orbiting the Earth or or a, a shuttle out on the pad or uh, uh, something. You know, you had to have a skeleton crew or a big crew working. Do you remember any of those times? Uh, well, I I, I remember actually uh, when I used to come down here from Cleveland where I started. Uh, to work a launch, many launches were scrubbed uh, uh, right before Thanksgiving and went till after. So I spent about five Thanksgivings down here in Florida uh, before I moved down here permanently. Mm -hmm. That that may have led to my saying I might as well move down there. Yeah. But the, uh, well, you're in uh, Cleveland, so I mean, is that really a, a Cleveland or Cocoa Beach? Just see which one. <laughs> well, I want to live in. Actually, that had to do uh, uh, more with the uh, uh, the prevailing thoughts of uh, technical people. Uh, when I was in Cleveland uh, at the Lewis Research Center. It was obvious that I would never uh, be promoted uh, uh, past a certain uh, level because I was not an engineer or scientist. And the uh, sort of the common feeling at many of the technical uh, centers, and uh, of course the uh, NASA was formed with the ones that had been built up uh, during the uh, uh, years following World War One in uh, 
NACA. But the, uh, I knew that um, if I didn't go somewhere else that I uh, would never be promoted past a certain amount. And I wasn't real keen about going to Washington. Not that Washington's not a nice city, uh, but it also is a, uh, a, a very uh, uh, pressure-filled uh, atmosphere too. And it was more fun to come to the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. We're enjoying Mr. Hugh Harris. He comes on at least once a month to talk about uh, the the shuttles of the month and and uh, and for that matter, any Apollo or Gemini missions that he worked. Uh, Marty was reminding me there, and I'm going to grab my sheet of paper here. Should have got my p photograph, but we do have ten humans being beings orbiting the Earth as we speak. Seven aboard the International Space Station. So celebrating. Um, Thanksgiving tomorrow on the space station, our astronaut Frank Rubio, uh, and uh, you've got uh, from uh, Josh Cassida and Nicole Mann. Uh, you've got the Japanese uh, exploration agency uh, 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 Wakata, uh, Koichi Wakata, and the Russians up there are Dmitry and Sergi and Anna uh, Krikina, the fifth. Uh, Soviet woman to go to space mm -hmm. up there. And uh, I said there was 10. I just mentioned seven. Hugh, everyone forgets about the three Chinese, two men and a woman that are on the, the uh, Heavenly Palace is the name of the Chinese space station up there. But really, Hugh, isn't Thanksgiving all about football and, and tur tur turkey and football? No, <laughs> no, I, I object. Okay. <laughs> the, Objection noted. Uh, it 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 certainly is a a big a big day for football. Absolutely, uh, yeah. But the uh, and I think the the astronauts all recognize that it's really a time to sort of look at our lives and uh, what we are thankful for, and that's one reason that you. Uh, well, that w we instituted uh, aboard the space station and uh, and other uh, spacecraft uh, the uh, practice of allowing astronauts to call home uh, he back here on Earth so that uh, they could take part in uh, what is indeed a uh, uh, sort of a dinner table type of discussion mm -hmm. that goes on with what we are all thankful for. And I, I think the, uh, by and large, that the answer to that is people and uh, other people and the effect they have on our lives and the uh, effect they have on making this a better place to live. Well put, Mr. Hugh Harris. Thank you so much for spending your time here today at the American Space Museum. As I put up there, our, our favorite uh, astronaut of the day up there, our gobbler up there. Um, and once again, we are so, so blessed to have people like yourself. Uh, today we've had, uh, this week we had Mr. Terry White on Stay Curious. Uh, we had Nick Thomas, the astronaut wrangler on Monday. Uh, and Marty and I have... Uh, uh, we're pushing 700 episodes, Hugh. We're about 695 into this thing called Stay Curious. That's amazing. And, well, we're, we're blessed. We are grateful here at Thanksgiving. It's time to, to just say thank you all for, for supporting us. This has become a, a big part of the Space Museum now uh, because of people like yourself that are willing to uh, just share share your memories with people out there that that love hearing these memories, Hugh. So on behalf of our museum, to all of you out there and, and all of you listeners and watchers, uh, we are very grateful and thankful uh, that you want to uh, continue to support the American Space Museum uh, in so many ways, in your personal appearances here at the museum, watching Stay Curious. Many of you uh, have become annual members uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and some of you have donated uh, 
uh, money to our program. And uh, Marty, uh, you feel the same way, don't you? Speaking on our UCAC uh, microphone there. <laughs> It's, it's, it's been a big family here, Marty, that I jumped into, and I'm I'm personally very grateful for your friendship and uh, everybody along the way here. Would you like to say something, Marty? No, but say Thanks something so. anyway. <laughs> I'm throwing the blank, but we appreciate you, Mark, and we're thankful to you, and for you, you. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. Well, we, we, we are thankful for you, too, for... Uh, making it possible uh, for us to be out there. Yeah, absolutely. We can't say enough about our our, our Apollo people that are, are all, you know, uh, getting up there in years. And and uh, uh, that's why the shuttle here is so important to this museum. And, and we, we build in our relationships with our shuttle astronauts, shuttle workers, Mike Leinbach, what a great uh, friend he's become of our mm -hmm. museum here. Uh, Terry White was on here yesterday, like I said. So uh, we have a great 2023 ahead of us to, to be grateful for uh, looking back on this year. So anything else you'd like to add, Hugh? Well, just thank you for watching. Very good. And with that, uh, we hope everyone has a safe and, and uh, happy Thanksgiving season. Uh, I'm going up to Tennessee and see my one-year-old grandbaby and my daughter here over my shoulder, Jessica. Let's see. Way. She's right. She's right there. <laughs> yeah. The other way. Yeah, the other way. Yeah, there's my daughter right there in the green hoodie. <laughs> right there. Uh, look at it. STS 129, 13 years ago, span our sky and the space station ahead of it there. Uh, and uh, happy to share that image with you all out there and our good friend, Nicole Stott, who's aboard STS-129 there. So, well, we've had a great little program here looking back and being thankful for our program. Uh, uh, stay curious as well as our museum. And just uh, thank you to the whole staff here. Uh, we couldn't do it without Karen Conklin, our director. Right. Angie Roberts is... Uh, our, our bookkeeper and assistant to Karen. We've got Anita Truex. We're so thankful for everything that Anita does here. Darren Roberts is our uh, STEAM uh, educator doing good things there. Uh, and of course, Connie McDaniel is one of our Stallworth volunteers out uh, here at the American Space Museum. And uh, Marty, another awesome volunteer here. So. What can I say except on behalf of all of them, Hugh Harris, thank you for your support of our program. Everybody out there, enjoy your Thanksgiving. And until next week, I'm Mark Marquette saying we will see you again to bridge the space between us.